Welcome to At Home with Music. I'm Leona Lagin, and you caught me playing some romantic piano music. And this type of piano piece was called a miniature, small, short, romantic piece of piano music. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about the Romantic era, shall we? So far in our journey through the history of classical music, we've touched upon the medieval era, the Renaissance era, the Baroque era, the classical era, and now we come to the Romantic era. After this comes the Impressionists, who could be included under both Romantic and Modern, and then we come to the Contemporary or Modern era. So here are some of the characteristics of music of the Romantic era. The music became more <laughs> emotional, if you like, and uh, the formal structural considerations from classical music, the composers began to rebel against these restraints. The orchestra got bigger, more players were added, new instruments were added, new types of music, new, new structures like rhapsodies and nocturnes and song cycles were added. The melodies got longer, and the harmonic progressions, the chord progressions, got more elaborate. There was a bigger range of dynamics, from very, very quiet and very soft to super loud and very emotional. Some composers sought to use their compositions to celebrate their countries. So, for example, the composer Sibelius wrote Finlandia about his home country of Finland. And Chopin, as we're going to see, wrote pieces that were based on Polish dances, like a mazurka. The Romantic era saw the rise of several new types of music. One that was very important was called program music. And these were compositions that tried to depict or suggest something that wasn't necessarily musical, tried to make you picture in your mind an incident, an idea, or an image, or it tried to describe in music something drawn from literature. Maybe you've heard Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet, for example. And so program music was intended to evoke images, remind you of events, and so on. This was in contrast to much of the music of the classical period, which we called absolute music. That was instrumental music, free of any explicit program. For example, Beethoven wrote the famous Moonlight Sonata, but he didn't call it that. To him, it was simply the piano sonata number 14 in C sharp minor, quasi una fantasia, opus 27, number 2. The popular name that everybody knows this sonata by, the Moonlight Sonata, goes back to a critic's remark after Beethoven's death. There was a French composer named Hector Berlioz who subtitled his Symphony Fantastique episode in the life of an artist. And he actually distributed a program when it was performed that talked about an artist who was suffering from unrequited love. It's kind of based on himself because he was in love with an actress named Harriet Smithson. The 19th century was also famous for the piano miniature, like the piece I was playing at the beginning, which is called Romance by Robert Schumann. So these are somewhat short and emotionally charged little piano pieces. Chopin, for example, was born in Poland, lived in Paris for most of his working life, and he almost exclusively composed for solo piano. He didn't give his works poetic titles, although some of the publishers put those on later, but he would write etudes, which were like exercises, or a mazurka, which was a Polish dance. The Romantic period also saw the rise of Italian opera, specifically the operas of Giuseppe Verde. He dominated Italian music from the 1840s through the 1880s, and he was a nationalist. He believed that music written by Italians should be in a particularly Italian style. In fact, there was a type of singing called bel canto, beautifully sung, which involved these long, flowing melodies with emphasis on beautiful vowel sounds and long, high, dramatic climaxes. He also used an onstage chorus in his operas. And then also there was the rise of German opera. Richard Wagner dominated German opera. And Wagner was also a nationalist, and he believed that German opera should be totally free of Italian and French influence. And he didn't even use self-contained arias like the Italian composers did. We'll talk more about these composers and their works when we come back to talk about the lives of many of the great composers. And really, we're just scratching the surface now about the Romantic era. 
We haven't really talked much about the music of Brahms, who combined classical forms with the emotionalism of the Romantic era. We're definitely just getting our feet wet in this overview of the Romantic era. We haven't even mentioned other famous Romantic composers like Schubert, Mendelssohn, Liszt, Grieg, many, many more. And we'll come back to them when we study the lives and works of the great composers. Next, we're going to move on to the Impressionists and the modern era. Thank you once again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below or you can contact me directly through my website at homewithmusic.com. I will include all the links. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description for some examples of German opera, Italian opera, piano miniatures, and other types of romantic classical music.